All right. So the um, and let me know if you're not seeing my screen of, of, for some reason, but um, so um, best way to get to requisitions is through the ILIF employees canvas area. So you can also go straight to my ILIF if you want. It doesn't make a difference to me, but if you go into ILIF employees, you'll see under my ILIF functions, there's requisitions. You click on requisitions. You'll sign in using your ILIF Google account and it takes you right to the requisitions area, okay? Um, it's part of the finances tab if you end up logging into my ILIF directly, all right? Um, to start a new requisition, you just click make new request. Um, had the green plus there. Um, so the way requisitions work um, is we add the items first and then we add the header at the end, okay? Um, so it, that's kind of weird. Normally you would think, oh, I'm going to set up the header first um, and then do all the items. But in this case, we don't. It's sort of like a shopping cart. Um, think of it that way. That's why we have a little checkout icon at the top, right, with the shopping cart there is they built it a bit like your online shopping, right? Um, here are the things I want. And then at the end, you'll say, here's my, you know, credit card information or whatever. Et cetera, right? So we do items first. Okay. So the other strange thing about um, requisitions on uh, my ILF is there are certain actions that if you do them in, in, in a particular order, it actually blanks out <laughs> some of the data you've already put in. So, so one thing I do is I tend to start from the bottom and go up, um, or at least if I'm going to add any files to to the um, either an item or to the header, I do the adding of files first, because sometimes um, when you add a file, when you attach a file, um, once you've done that step, sometimes um, my ILF will actually blank out all the other stuff you've entered, so you'll have wasted your time. Okay, so um, if I'm doing my visa, uh, and Suzanne, I'm not gonna. So one thing to note about the request date at the very top, at the um, end of a fiscal year or beginning of a new fiscal year, this request date matters a whole bunch um, because you wanna make sure that your requisitions are in the fiscal year you they need to be in. So in June, um, we often have to backdate our request dates to get um, requisitions to go in the appropriate uh, fiscal year. So- well, and Michael, I'll mention really quick, right underneath the date, it says budget year. So just yep. to play, put in 6-1-2021. Six, 6-1, that'll be the same budget year, right? No, it'll be next year. Oh, no, that's year. next year. Yeah, 6-1-2021. So if I put that now, in. And I don't know, at some point it does flip it where it yeah, says the once, budget year, it'll flip it to the next one. Yeah, once you hit save, it'll flip it, right? Same yeah. with if we go back to... Uh, 05, 31, 2020, right? Mm -hmm. Although um, hopefully that won't. There, that one had flipped. That one yeah. flipped it, right? Well, it must not so, flip one because we're not there. Anyway, um, but that's just a good way to reference what budget year you're in is just look below. Yeah. So and also really that reminders in May on this and all that, that kind of stuff again, but just yeah. anyway. Yeah, so that only really matters uh, at the turnover of the fiscal years. Usually just leave it as, as today's date. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add supporting documentation. So, um, so I'm going to do my visa. So let me show you. Um, I have all of my receipts um, as separate files right now. You can do your receipts as one file, um, one PDF, or you can have them as separate PDFs. Um, Suzanne says both works. Depends on what's um, easier for you. It's preferred to put them all together if you can and attach them uh, at the end, but as one document. Um, as one document. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, the the individualized way just be, so you can see that you can attach things along the way. Um, so my visa looks like this, right? So I have a credit and three transactions, right? So as long as all of these items 
go through the same approval process, right? So as long as all of these items have the same approver, I can put all of these on one requisition, right? Um, for a visa, right? If you're doing a non-visa, um, as long as the vendor, right? As long as all the items are for the same vendor, you can put them on one requisition, right? Now, I will just throw a caveat to that. Realize that if you add more than one invoice to a vendor, um, we can't track the invoice number that way, which is fine. Yes. But so, try so, to reference it somehow in the description or something like that. Um, just because sometimes vendors, you know, you'll be paying six invoices and they'll be like, well, what are you paying for? Sure. So, um, so description so you, at that point is the only place you could put an invoice number. Would you prefer then, Suzanne, to have one requisition per invoice? No, because JBAR is going to <clears throat> combine them yeah. on purchase orders. So then it kind of becomes right. a moot point as far as So it sends one check anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway. Um, okay. But so I'm working on Visa. I have one credit and three transactions. So I should have four receipts um, and my Visa to attach to this requisition. Okay. So I'm going to take the first, the credit's going to be the weird one. I'm going to take it first, right? So I have a $1,500 credit. Um, that I that for survey gizmo because we paid it twice accidentally. Um, so I'm going to say survey gizmo um, uh, credit. I'm going to say here um, quantities one, um, and then the amount <clears throat> is fifteen hundred. Okay. Now you'll say, well, but a credit is negative, right? <clears throat> Correct. A credit is negative, but uh, my Aleph won't let us enter a negative number. So <clears throat> for credits, I have to add, I add the item as a positive number and then down in the detailed description, I would say um, this is credit for double payment. Yeah. Now, uh, I already broke my own rule. Um, I said I was going to start from the bottom up and attach files first. <laughs> so I'll get to show you so, sort of what happens. It's, it's not as bad on the item page, but what I should have done first is click on the add supporting documentation link. Okay. And then say, choose file. And I'm going to browse on my machine where the file lives. And my file lives in. Oh, annoying. Hang on. Yeah. There we go. Um, my file lives in here. And so I'm going to find the. Uh, so I, I, this one just happens to be email because they didn't give us a, a, a receipt for the, the credit. So, but I need some backup. So I'm attaching the, um, their email to us saying that the refund was made. Okay. And it's got the invoice number on it that it corresponds to. So I choose the file and I click save. And then you'll notice the file gets attached. Um, you'll know if the file actually did get attached because you'll see a file name sitting next to the little delete icon right above add supporting documentation. Okay. Hey, Michael. And, yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, my ILF is a, a homegrown front end to Jensbar, correct? It's not homegrown. No, they built this. Uh, okay. So, because my next question was going to be is, can it not accept the negative or we've chosen not to accept the negative? It, it, it won't can't. accept it. Okay. It Thanks. Can't. And, and that's not something we, it's not something we can change. Yep, just want to know. Thank you. Ideally, um, I would prefer, if possible, if you remember, to put refund in all caps before survey gizmo and you don't have to put credit. Refund to me is like an instant trigger that I need to change the amount um, if you do it on my ILF. So that right there is perfect because then I'll know. But then I also have the detailed description that Michael wrote. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so if you're doing a refund, put refund in the item in all caps first, put a positive value in, add the supporting documentation for the creditor refund. Um, and then we've, so then we've got to search for the account to refund this to. And ideally, you'll refund it to the same account that it was spent out of, right? Um, so you might have to go look that up on an old, um, um, but if you click on the search for account, um, I tend to search, some of you will have just lists of accounts here, right? Um, um, I tend to do search by account and then put in the department number, um, which is the four digits. Um, 
before the uh, kind of it's the middle the last, number. Yes, yeah, the middle four digits. Right? Yeah. Um, and so I hit search, and then I get a list of accounts. Uh, and then from this accounts, I know this one was in software maintenance contracts. Um, so I choose that account, say select, and then it populates the account in the budget account field. Okay. So that's item one's done. And when I'm done with item one, I can, you can ignore project code. We don't really use those. Um, when I'm done with that, I say save and add another because I have another one to add. All right. Any questions on that? So Karen's question was, what if there's not enough money in the account number ah, in the DL detail? So yeah. if that happens, um, you need to send an email. Does anybody else hear her? No, I don't. Yeah. Suzanne, you're breaking up. I'll see either. Ideally right now, it's Andy and Jason. Um, those two are the yeah, only ones. Can. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, so if you need to move money around, an email needs to go to Sandy and Jason for now, requesting the movement of that money. Yeah. So ideally, so the, you should do that prior to doing the requisition. Because Michael, can you save it and then just leave it there? If the money's moved, how does that work? Yeah, you can save it. Yeah. So so um so if so if you enter an item and this happens because we have it set so that you can't uh, request um, payment against a budget line that would make it go over budget, right? Um, which is good, good internal control. So if, in, in, and Genzabar will give you a message saying, hey, uh, Red X, this, is, this account's over budget, right? Um, if that happens, then you'll need to email Jason and Sandy um, and ask for money to be moved from somewhere else into that budget or choose a different account um, that has money in it. Um, and all you have to do is, um, it, as long as you just say save, um, or say, um, done and proceed to check out, it'll save it. Um, and you won't have to finish checkout and, and you can always come back. It'll sit as a, basically a draft requisition and you can come back and, and change it later. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Christine, you had a question about um pdfs i didn't see the whole question yeah i've been including um do all documentation in one pdf at the end with the visa statement is it okay to do that rather yeah. than having to do individual documentation yep. for each item yes absolutely in fact that's preferred okay so um for those of you who can create one pdf um that's the preferred mechanism and you would attach that only at the end you don't have to attach it to each item you just attach at the header record when we create that at the very end. Great. Yeah. Please know that you only have to attach a document once. You either do it in the individual line item or you yeah. do it header. You don't have yeah, you to. You don't have to do it both. It. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I have go a ahead. question for both Michael and Suzanne. <clears throat> um, I have both of these scenarios. Uh, the one you just described, Michael, where I have a hundred mm -hmm. bucks left of the GL, but I have a nine hundred dollar invoice to pay, yep. and process that just as you just indicated, um, and that rack might sit, um, depending on the timing of when we identify it and enter it and determine we're short, and Sandy or Jason are able to move the money. That rack might have to extend to the following week's pay cycle. So that's one example. The other example, related but different, is, um, for instance, I just had a $960 wreck in the system from last week for our elevator company with whom I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. So rather than leave that wreck hanging open for two or three pay cycles, I just had Donna delete it while I'm fighting. Does it, so that's the preamble. Does it cause problems for the AP system to leave a rack in my elevator example open from one cycle to the next. It doesn't cause a problem in the system. It causes a problem with me. <laughs> um, I try to pay everything that's outstanding in AP. That's kind of how we've always done it. And I try to maintain that consistency. Um, if there's a requisition that's sitting out there and it's been, it's not submitted is basically what the status is on my end. Um, I usually send an email to inquire about it and Donna's always good about letting me know, well, we're waiting for this or we're waiting for that. 
The other option is just send me an email saying this is going to be sitting there. Um, Cause the thing you have to remember is Jen Zabar in accounts payable will only give me so much detail unless I change the date. So I could look at everything from June 1st and see which requisitions are still outstanding or whatever. I just don't want to do that every week because it takes a lot of time. So I try to stay up on all requisitions that are out there, um, including the ones that are pending or whatever, or sent back, returned. Um, so Andy, as far as answering your question, it's however you want to do it. Just make sure that you communicate with me. I know we had a mess up with that one vendor and I paid them by accident. Um, but it's, uh, it sounds like though, Suzanne, for you, so first of all, it's not a system problem. Second, it sounds like it's easier for your process. If we have to delay payment, it maybe it's just easiest and cleanest for AP if we just blow the wreck out of there and then put it in when it actually can be paid. That actually, that would be ideal, yes. You all have the most requisitions within the institution um, as far as weekly types of things. Um, so yeah, if you're not gonna, if you don't wanna pay it, don't put it in. Okay, that's what we'll do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to add another item. So uh, again, on my visa, the next item on my visa is uh, a Slack payment. Okay, so I'm just going down the transactions in my visa. So um, I need to make sure I have the receipt for that. I do. It's... Uh, not that one. Mm -hmm. It's this one. No, oh, this one. So I have it. Okay, good. So I have that. So I know the amount is uh, 2087. So I'm going to go back over here. The first thing I'm going to do is add supporting documentation. Choose file. Browse. And I grab that Slack receipt. That one. Uh, save that. And please use PDFs for your receipts, whether it's one giant PDF or separate. Try not to use Word docs or other things if you can avoid it. Um, so then in here, I'll say Slack um, additional user um, one twenty dot eighty seven, um, and then uh, search for account. Again, I do the departmental code. You can search by description if you'd rather. Um, sometimes I do that if I'm using other accounts I don't use very often um, and, and find it that way. Um, this one's also software maintenance contracts. Um, and this is a new user. In You're staff. over budget. Ah, look at that. <laughs> That's a problem. Um, huh. So this is a good example. So what I would do here is either I would decide, well, I'm not going to submit this whole thing or I'm going to choose a different account. Choosing a different account is a, probably a bad idea here. Um, but uh, that's interesting. Um, I could just put this for now in um, computer software because we got money there. Um, new user in Slack. Um, so then I, I would hit, uh, again, once I've done all that, um, I hit save and add another because I have another to do. Just for time's sake, I'm not gonna add my other items. Uh, I'm just gonna go onto the header screen so we can talk about that. Um, so when I've added all of my items, um, I hit done, proceed to checkout. And I should be, oh, it was over budget. Oh, that was because that one's a credit. It's still not gonna let me submit this though, um, which is interesting. So it, when I go ahead, um, it, the fifteen hundred dollars is what's putting you over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is a credit. So this is a bit of a problem, right? Um, yeah. This is a rare. This isn't going to happen very often. So it's fine. We'll we'll, um, we'll just proceed. I'm not going to submit this for real anyway right now. Um, but so when you get to so this is now the header screen. So you should see at the top your summary of the items that you have entered, and if you're working on a visa. The total here, right here, this total won't let me select it there. That total there, see? That should reflect the same amount on your visa total if you don't have credits, right? 
Um, if you have a credit, obviously you're gonna have to subtract that credit amount. Um, so that's a way for a check and you can count the number of items, make sure you added them all, that sort of thing. There's also an add another item link on the, just to the left there with the green plus. If you realize you forgot one, you just click add another item and it goes back to the item screen, okay? Um, again, on this screen, we're gonna start from the bottom and attach any documents we need to attach. So here, if as Christina said, your practice is to combine all your receipts um, into one and your receipts and or your receipts and your visa bill all into one uh, PDF, you would come down to add a file, click add a file, choose file. And just like we did on the item screen, go find the file. And this time I'm gonna just put my visa bill here. Um, Cause I, I add my item PDFs along with the item. So, so once I've added that, now I can go fill out the rest of it. Um, if you add the file after entering data here, depending on where you are in, in, in entering your data, it might blank it out, okay? So um, the next thing, I actually move from bottom to top here. The next thing I do is choose a vendor. Now, if you know the Genzibar ID for your vendor, feel free to type it in. Um, often we don't know those things, so you'll click on search. It opens the search window. And here for Visa, the vendor is US Bank, right? So I just tend to search for bank. Um, so type in bank and then you get a list uh, and it's this second one here, US Bank, right? There's all kinds of other ones, but we know not to use those. Um, if your vendor is, is not, is, if this is not a Visa, you just would search for your vendor here, vendor here right? So um, for example, if you're actually getting, um, uh, a reimbursement to yourself, you would put yourself here as the vendor, right? Um, if, yeah, that sort of thing. Or, or you know, if, if I'm paying, anyway, you just type the vendor name here, you find the vendor, so bank, um, I choose and then click, click the little select option next to your vendor and say, okay. When you get back to the header screen, you wanna make sure you see the vendor's information below the vendor box. If you don't, that vendor's not actually been selected. All right. Even if there's an ID number in the box, it needs to see. It needs to show the vendor below that in order for it actually to pass that on to the business office. All right. So that's one way to check yourself. Okay. So then um, I go to approval track. So again, I'm moving up the screen. I don't need to say ship order here. I go to approval track. Um, and here you would just choose the, the approver for this particular requisition. Um, um, here in this case, uh, the president approval track is who approves my visa. Um, so once I've done that, um, I just add a request name. And here I would say for visa, Hemingway visa, what month was this? Um, October. Yeah, it's actually the September yeah. visa, right? September belt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so what I, I tend to say is it's the, oh no, it's my October statement. Um, yeah. So I say Hemingway Visa October 2020. Um, and that's the, again, that's the header name for this whole requisition. Um, now I will say one thing at this point, that he Hemingway Visa October 2020, that is actually going to be seen by the approver which is ideal for them so they can look at it and have an idea of what it is that you're submitting. So if you leave this blank, they have no idea what it is that they're going to approve. If you actually put a brief description in here of what you're doing, then they'll know. Yeah. And they have an easier way of um, if they just need to approve that or whatever. So yeah. that particular information is important for the ap approver. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and, and if you have any other information you wanna add for the business office, you can add a comment here with the add a comment link and that'll, that'll attach the comment to the requisition. Your approver can see those as well if they click on the item and go to the bubble um, or if they click on the comments here on the, on the header page. So um, you don't need to add a purchasing agent. Um, I don't think the need by date is something we use very often. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, not unless you specifically need it by a specific date, but no, we don't yeah. usually use that. Because we try to pay things right as they come through. So um, yeah, and then if you are requesting for someone else, you can change that at the very bottom. Um, 
there's a few folks who can request for other folks, but mostly we're just leaving that blank. So then when you're done with that, you just click submit for approval or given okay, so my case, since, since I have an over budget, if I try to submit, it's going to say, Hey, you can't do that. Um, so, so here I use the link that says save and submit later. I go email um, Jason and Sandy and say, Hey, I need to move some money around um, in order to get this paid. Once I get confirmation back and that money is moved, I come back in, find my requisition. So here I'll say save and submit for later. Okay, so that what that does is next time I go back to, I come back into my iLift, you notice here at this screen, it says requisitions, one unsubmitted, two denied, right? So if you say go to details, if you click on the go to details link, right, then it'll show you your unsubmitted um, requisitions and you can click into that to edit it. It takes you right back to the screen. And then if I wanted to go, but, oh, notice. Um, okay, so <laughs> I cheated. This, you wanted to test this, that's right. <laughs> I cheated. Um, I actually went into Genzabar and changed his amount to a negative because I wanted to see if it'd show up on your end. Um, yeah. So that's something I can do, which now you're not over budget. Right, which is great. So now I actually <laughs> want to edit. I want to edit the second item in my requisition to, to put it back the into the, the right GL number. So if I click on this little pencil here, um, carefully not clicking on the delete icon, if I click on the pencil, it takes me back to that item and I can say, search for account again. My, that's fine. <laughs> um, choose software maintenance contract, select account, and then done, proceed to checkout. And that should take me back to the header record. Oh, except I clicked it twice. Um, so that probably didn't save. So that happens sometimes if, if I click on things and I don't notice that it, um, it was in process, Genzabar will just send you back to the main page. But it did save that. You'll notice now I have two items that are going to the same GL software maintenance contracts rather than two different GLs here. Okay. So then if I were done, I could say submit for, for approval. Um, that'll give me a little message that says, hey, you need to send a hard copy of this to the business office so that they know to pay it, um, which we send those to you, Suzanne, right? Uh, well, now it's an email. You don't have to print anything. Yep. You just let me know yep. that it's out there. Yep. So you just send an email to Suzanne that says, hey, this requisition is good to go. And then once it's approved, it gets paid. And I will right. just state as far as visa statements, you only need to copy the first two pages. You don't have to do the back if you don't want to. I don't need four pages of the statement. It's only two. Not that it Super. matters, but just right. to let you know. Don't have to do double sided. All right, so that that's the process. What what other questions do you have? I have a quick one. Yep. Uh, I think I think if I remember right, I, I learned this by screwing both Suzanne and Michael up. Probably the second or third month that I worked here. Um, Donna creates the recs and puts them on my approval track. Uh, yep. I review and approve or kibitz with Donna on alternate alter alterations to the rec. Yeah. Yep. Um, it doesn't happen infrequently where Donna puts something on a general ledger account that either we normally do or I've asked her to. Mm -hmm. And then when I am actually reviewing the rec, I go, you know what? I don't really want it on general ledger A. It really belongs to general ledger B. Um, I'm under the understanding, I think, again, through trial and failure, that I really cannot change the rec that Donna has created, I need to send it back to her and have her make that change to keep it from screwing Genzibar up. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. The approver does not have the permission to, as far as I am understanding, because I, I haven't been able to do it, the approver does not have the ability to change the item. It has to be sent back. And, and with a note, because you can give a comment, right, on why you sent it back, yeah. with a note to change that, to, to edit that item, um, to, to have a different GL. Well, and look at that more as a safety feature. We don't want the approver to go in and change things to a different GL number 
um, cause this all there, it leaves a signature behind. Yeah. So we want Donna to be the one to change it so that Andy, you're the one that actually is approving it and you're fine with the GL number. If you just change the GL number, well, we've kind of lost the security feature there. You still, you still have a separation of duties, accounting control, basically. Yeah. It's accounting exactly. controls for sure. Yep. Yeah. So that's okay. by design. Just want to double check. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Good question. Anything else? No, everything else. Jason, seems fine. this is the first time you've seen this. What do you? Any thoughts? Questions? Jason, no, I and I. I mean, for the, I've been spending more time looking at the Genzabar version of this, but I have walked through this before, and I don't have any questions on this. Okay. Okay. The key piece on this page I want to remind you is make sure you select an approval track, right? And make sure you select a vendor. Um, unfortunately, we can't force those. We cannot make them required fields. Um, otherwise we would, <laughs> so that they don't end up in the business office with either of those things. But um, so just be real, real careful to make sure you select an approval track and make sure you select a vendor. Um, and check those, once you add a file, if you upload your file and attach it, check those boxes again, make sure they haven't been blanked out. And just realize once it's submitted for approval, the only person that can re, um, change that or return it is the actual approver. I can't do anything. I can only right. delete it or yeah. um, once it's been approved and submitted by the actual approver, it's done. Yeah. It's a done deal. There's nothing that can be changed with that particular requisition. Right. Which again is an accounting control. So yes. Um, good. Any other questions? Questions about files? So again, um, as Christina noted, um, by all means, combine all of your receipts into one PDF and attach them here at the header rather than at the item level. Um, if you've put them at the item level, you do not need to add them again on the header. Um, so save yourself some time there. Uh, if you if you need help, or if you want to um, some some guidance on how to create a single PDF from multiple documents, contact support, and we can help you with that. Um, the only other thing that I will state is please make sure on any of your receipts you write the who, what, where, when, why kind of thing. So if you're using taking somebody out for lunch, for instance, make sure you put mm -hmm. who it's for or with. Um, these are all IRS kind of standards. It's not. I lift business office standards, but it should always say who, what, where, when, why, how much, whatever. And that's for an email, it's for a receipt, it's for anything that you're actually paying. We should have all the detail right there. If you hand, have to handwrite it, then you have to handwrite it. Or make a comment on the item level for that particular receipt. Perfect, thank you. All right, so hearing no other questions. I'm going to stop sharing screen. You can stop recording. Kyle.